Do you ever th think about her when we're together? Like, think, think about her? I think about her all the time. Sometimes when I feel happy, I feel terrible. Like we're betraying her. Should we stop? I literally have no idea what I'm doing. Just be his Jane. Are you picking me up every day? For now, yeah. Like or don't like. Like. Gemma's a part of Fee for you. You're kidding yourself if you think you're all of a sudden gay. Give me a break. And you're a part of Fee for Gemma. I'm literally just doing what Fee would have done. Exactly. That's why it's so weird, okay? You have no idea what we're going through. No idea. We all lost her. You're the only one acting like it was personal. She was my wife, Jane! My wife! Hello. My name's Spiro Economopoulos, and I am the program director for the Melbourne Queer Film Festival. What you just saw was a trailer for the film My Fiona, which is screening as part of MQFF Together from the 11th to the 21st of March in cinemas and online as well. I'm really excited to have uh, the filmmaking team behind My Fiona joining me. So I'm going to bring everyone up onto the stream and introduce them as we go along. So first up, we have writer-director Kelly Walker. Hello. Hi. Hello, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's Thank bring you. And next up, we have Tina Carbone, who's the producer of the film. Hello, Tina. Hi, how are Hi. you? Good, hey. how are you guys? <laughs> oh, good. And we also have joining us uh, cast member Sarah Amini. Sarah, hello. Hi, hello. Hi. I've been told you all. Great. Okay. Nice to see you all. And just got to say thank you so much for um, joining us. We really appreciate you taking the time out. Uh, My Fiona is a really wonderful movie, and I was very, very honoured and really excited that we've got it screening as part of our festival. So thank you. Thank you. You know I've been wanting to be a part of your festival for so long. Hey, yeah. Well, this is it. This is it, which is really cool. So, uh, Kelly, I'm going to start off with you. Um, firstly, um, the film opens uh, with a really confronting moment and uh, just to reassure audiences as well, it's not a graphic scene, but uh, it's, a, it's a moment that uh, obviously permeates the rest of the film and drives the story. And I was really curious what the genesis of uh, the story was for you. The story or the story of the, the scene specifically? The film, the film in general, yeah. Yeah. So when I was about 12 years old, my babysitter passed away from suicide. Yeah. And it was one of those things, you're so young, 11 or 12 years old, and um, I didn't quite know what to do with it in my brain. And it turned out that she'd been prescribed the wrong antidepressants. And it seemed so, it seemed so out of nowhere and also seemed like it could have been prevented. Um, so that's mm -hmm. kind of where like what was inspired to write the story. Because originally I was like, when I, it happened again to my brother years later, his friend had the same thing happen. Wrong antidepressants, killed himself within two weeks. And that was maybe five years ago. And I was like, well, I'm going to go to high schools and I'm going to talk to children and I'm going to tell them that this thing's going on and we need to have better relationships with our doctors. And then I was like, who's going to let me into a high school to talk to children? Like, no one's going to do that. So the movie came from the idea that to just start a conversation um, and then the sexuality aspect of the film was kind of, uh, I'm bisexual and it wasn't something I was, cause I'm married to a man. I felt like kind of like, I didn't know that part of my life or I hadn't really ex brought that into my world, I suppose. So it was almost a way of standing behind Jane and writing her character and writing her story that allowed me to kind of step out and be like, and I'm Jane as well. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, actually, uh, you, just touching on the bisexuality of it, I was going to mention it later, but I might as well bring it up now. Um, bisexuality, I think, on screen has had a very complicated history. I think uh, it's been much, I think, misrepresented in mainstream cinema and, and as well as queer cinema as well. And I, I really love the way you treated that uh, in this film. And I was really curious about was the bisexuality something that was I guess, really integral to the story for you right from the start? Or was that an element for you that kind of came later on when you were writing this? 
Um, you know what it was? It was when I first, when I, I always kind of saw myself as Jane before, you know, when I, when I was writing it. And when I pictured Fiona's spouse, it was, it was Gemma and it was, yeah. what, it was her, it was her essence. It was her energy. It was her quiet, um, her quiet way of grieving. And I was like, oh, I guess, I guess this is a lesbian relationship. And then through that Jane story, originally it wasn't fully, I don't think that, that they fell in love to the way they do in, in this version of the film. And little bit by little bit, it was me putting more of myself into that. And I think, I I, I do agree, like bisexuality on film has been, yeah, I, I hadn't ever really identified with someone on film that I felt like, oh, there's there's my story. It's always been very stereotypical, at least in the past, not so much anymore. Um, so I just wanted to write a character that falls in love with a person and who happened yeah. to be another woman. Um, Cause that's how it's, I've been in love with a woman before and it was the same. It was, it was her, her that I was in love with. Yeah. 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 I think it's, I think it's really beautifully told actually. Um, uh, so speaking of the characters, actually, Sarah, I'll, I'll, I'll throw this one to you actually. Um, okay. You play a really integral role in the story. Obviously you play uh the character um <laughs> and uh, your, your your character obviously is the story that you know really drives the narrative essentially and is is the is the person that really kind of permeates the whole story um i'm really curious as an actor uh, how do you prepare for this because obviously your screen time uh is smaller but your throughout the film really your presence is um, you know your you you as the as the character mm. um and I'm wondering what kind of research do you kind of go into for this? Do you do you sort of hold back on it because you know your screen time is limited, or do you actually kind of go deeper to help the other actors? I'm just kind of really curious about your method with this. So that's a really great question. Um, you know, it's funny when Kelly approached me uh, with the the story and the role. Um, it was really interesting. I read it on a plane. And by the time I had landed, I was like, yes, I want to do this part. <laughs> and, um, and I know um, I knew Jeanette, who, who played as Jane, and um, a you know, wonderful uh, actress. And we had been friends in the sort of acting circle. And I was excited to, to, to work with her and um, didn't know Corbin, but also likewise was was looking forward to to developing that relationship with her as well. Um, something that Kelly didn't know when she approached it, the the story and the character for me was that I um, also had an experience where the woman who I nannied when I first moved to LA, I nannied her two year old. She also was on antidepressants and committed suicide, and that was I just thought it was just so incredible that we had all sort of had the same experience. And so, yeah. um, and my initial questions, just as the nanny, not even as a part of the family was, how could she have left her son? How could she have left her yeah. husband? There was just so much that I that I didn't know. And that's sort of where I led with, was kind of trying to get into, uh, her name was Jenna, trying to get into Jenna's brain almost and her, and her psyche and and try to, just figure not so much judge the character not so much you know not um i couldn't judge her i just needed to to figure my way out my figure my figure my way into her and and that was through through the experience that i had um with jenna and also through a lot of movement which i haven't done before with the character i'm i'm a very like analytical actor i'm very you know uh, i do my research and things like that um and i'm but 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 with fiona for some reason i i needed to get into her a different way and it was through a lot of movement and kelly had given me some music very early on to um, sort of set the tone for the story. And so using that movement, I danced a lot. And I asked Kelly to borrow her clothes um, yeah. because I didn't feel like I owned anything that that was Fiona. And I was like, I need to get into her body. And so it was sort of, I, I approached it, this character very differently from what I I normally do. And it was just, a lot of movement outside in kind of uh for this role like wearing her clothes wearing her jewelry that the tattoos that they put on me on set 
that was sort of my way into her. And then as far as, as far as, um, not be, I wanted to be on screen obviously much more because I love the story so much. I was like, oh man, there were days where I would just show up on set or I would hang out late. So I was like, I don't want to leave. Um, but I understood that, you know, like you said, Spiro, like you said, Fiona is, is who drives the story forward. And she's, even if she's not in the scene, she is in the scene. And so yeah. it was very important to me to really just, um, I felt like I already had that kind of relationship with Jeanette, which was, which was wonderful. We just were able to build off of that and, and create more history for the friendships. And then as far as, um, Corbin, we didn't have a ton of time before we started shooting to connect. So every time that we were together, I just tried very much to be present with her and to just um, leave some sort of impact and just try to connect with her the times that we were together so that when I was not there, there would be some sort of lingering, you know, <laughs> um, Fiona in the air. Yeah, that, oh, that's amazing. And actually, it's really amazing that you, you mentioned... Uh, uh, approaching it with a sort of a dancing kind of movement way because I have to admit uh, the opening scene is really incredible and particularly the way your character moves around the space it's almost like mm -hmm. and that is having like an out of body experience in a way and, and it actually isn't there, isn't there already and I I thought Absolutely. that was uh, really powerfully done and your, your instincts were really fantastic actually I thought it was really great thank you thank you so much um, Tina this one's for you so a, a film like My Fiona, it's a very intimate story. It deals with some really tricky subject matter as well. How difficult is it to get stories like this up, films that are sort of, you know, female-centric as well? You know, is the environment something that's really shifted and it's actually a really great time for this or, or was it actually really hard? Um, on set? Oh, just getting the, getting the film together, really, kind of getting, I guess, kind of, I think I'm more talking about it in sort of a, the back-end financing and getting getting a story up like this. Well, actually, Kelly has more of the financing end of this. I came on sort of after the financing came in. Yeah. So, Kelly, do you want to take the financing part? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's not a ton to it. We had private investors. Um, yeah. It really came down to... Th these investors weren't probably able to look at the script and go, is this a good or is this a good script or not? Like there wasn't enough of a gauge, but what they could gauge was how much it mattered to me. And I put this pitch deck together um, that I spent a, a long time on. And it also had like a lot of facts about mismanagement of antidepressants and, and over prescriptions uh, with doctor with pa uh, patient relationships. And I think kind of everyone that came on board that was maybe above our pay grade or gave us the time of day or is because of just how important the story was to me and yeah. it had a bigger picture than like, I just want to make a feature film because, you know, it was like, this story has to be told and we have to tell it. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Kind of how everyone grew. And then Tina, Tina's role was she came in uh, kind of pre-production and she was like our, our unset mother and, you know, took out every fire, kept everybody happy but I'll let I can let Tina speak on that because I think that's really interesting that that the content of the film versus how you were able to keep the set so comforted. Well, and I do want to speak on uh, same as what Sarah said about like getting the script because um, I came on because um, we uh, Kelly and I had a mutual friend and Kelly was looking for kind of a, another producer to come in and and just help out with pre pro and get you know kind of the rest of development in place to get us ready to start shooting and um she sent me the pitch deck and her deck which is what she sent to investors to get um investments into place was incredible i mean it it, it was everything you'd want to see to know you're in good hands like her story was on that paper the visuals was on that paper like every single thing that was in her head was on that page and i knew exactly the story she wanted to tell the characters were there her her director's statement was on there um the playlist that she probably sent sarah was on there everything was on there mm -hmm. and um and then the script she sent me that script i started reading it at late like late maybe 11 p.m and um i was like oh i'm gonna read it tonight and i'll email her over the weekend or whatever and it was, Kelly, I think it was like, what, one in the morning or something. It was so late. And I couldn't even wait till the next day. I emailed her that night. And I said, 
I'm in, I love the story. The characters spoke to me. I laughed, I cried. It just touched me to my core. I couldn't even wait to the next day to email her. I just knew I had to be a part of it immediately. And um, we spoke on the phone and I just felt like a kindred spirit with her. And I, I knew that I wanted to be a part of this project and around her yeah. and in her atmosphere. Um, yeah. And I think that that was a huge part of just the set in general, because we all loved the story. We all loved Kelly. Um, and it just became, like she said, it just became like this family of people that really wanted to tell this story. We all had such um, just a personal, like a personal feeling towards everything about this movie and yeah. from the get go. Um, and I yeah. think that everything that happened, like things fell apart. Like we had these little, little fires happening left and right, but everything that fell apart somehow managed to become the better situation in the long run. Mm. It was like the things that fell out Ma magically made things yeah. the right choice for us. So mm. um, yeah, it was just, uh, it was a happy little project. Um, not to say it was easy because it wasn't easy every day was <laughs> a difficult, yeah. uh, you know, it's indie, it's indie filmmaking, you know, where it's yeah. always a struggle, but uh, man, what a, what a fabulous crew and a cast of just people that wanted to make this movie together. So, yeah. Yeah. And I imagine sort of working in, a, in an environment where you are dealing with this kind of subject matter can can be really difficult. So it's amazing that you can kind of hold that together and, and sort of all be kind of on a really unified front, really. Yeah, lots yeah. of hugs and high fives. Lots yeah, of I was going to say, there was so much love on the set. But it, didn't, it never felt heavy. Even that, that, that scene, the opening scene, you know, that was a really, like you said, that is a scene that sets the tone for us in the movie. And that was a really yeah. particularly heavy day on paper but yeah. it was such a loving and uh supportive it was like a like you know it just felt like everybody was just kind of wrapping me around in a warm blanket as i was going through this and it was it it just made it so much easier to be able to not take it home with you you know yeah. they're not in like in in and have that moment and be super present and then Okay, let's move on to the next scene. That that scene is done, and you you just feel and you've loved and supported as you're as you're going yeah. through it as an actor. For me, I'm speaking for myself, but no, I were, you, too. Yeah. were you shooting um uh, chronologically then for that reason? Because I'm sort of wondering whether, like you know, like you said, the impact of something like that, and yeah. no, you weren't. Yeah, no, we we didn't have the luxury no. of anything like that. <laughs> 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 that set was available was the day we were shooting it. Mm -hmm. right. um, that was yeah. a. That was nine days into shooting, I think. That's oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was, we, I call that the whisper day. Everyone whispered the whole day. No one spoke at a normal yeah. volume. Just into mm -hmm. respect of that moment. And, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and I, wait, correct me if I'm wrong, but did we shoot, we shot that scene and then a flashback scene the same day, right? And that was incredible because there's, there's a, you know, Jane and Fiona, flashback scene when they just are getting into their space. I don't want to give anything away, so I'm being very yeah. vague right now. Um, but we shot those on the same day. So to go from that, to go from the opening scene and then go to a flashback, I mean, I was I was more emotional after the flashback because it's like, oh my gosh, you know, this is the history of their friendship. And so yeah. I was, I was, it was much more sentimental to shoot it that way actually than the other way around for me because then you see why it was why it's so hard for Jane you see mm. the friendship you know yeah. it, it just flew off the paper but like Tina said I wanted to reiterate that when I read the script I it just their friendship flew off the page for me and I yeah. was just like I have to be a part of this I mean this is just so yeah anything to do with female friendships but 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 at a very deep level you know at a very deep and profound level not just sort of just the surface thing it was like it yeah. just Everything was there. Their history was there. Everything was there. Yeah. And, and and actually, yes, yeah, Sarah, uh, you've touched on something I wanted to mention to Kelly as well. I think obviously we've talked a lot about the opening scene and mm -hmm. that you know, drives the story and the suicide. But in actual fact, I think what's really interesting about the film is the way, I guess, grief plays out for different people in different ways. And in actual fact, what happens is that it brings you know, not only it brings these two women together, and so the film's also a love story, and I'm really, uh, and a really effective one as well, I have to say, and a really and a really powerful one. And I'm curious about 
uh, as a writer, when, you, when you're kind of putting this all together, uh, was this a long process? Was this something that kind of came, you know, like a flash of instinct and suddenly you had the whole story on page? Absolutely not. <laughs> it was two years of writing. And in those two years, I went back to a blank page four times. Yeah, um, right. So that was, I. you know what I think too? I didn't know for the longest time if Gemma and Jane were in love. And I think I had to keep going back to the beginning to understand them better. Because there, there were times where I'd feel like, this isn't fair to Fee. They can't be in love. I have to break them apart. But I'm like, but what if they're really in love? And then there was a moment, maybe I think we filmed in 2019, so it was 2018. There was a moment I was at a, a film festival in Cleveland for another film I had in the bathroom at 1 a.m. at some after party. And I had this light bulb moment and it's a scene that never made it into the film. I won't even say what it is, but I had this moment and it was Jane and Gemma. And I, it was this thing. I was like, oh my God, they are in love. And what if Fee came into their lives to bring them together? Like, what if this is the big picture of these three people's relationships together. And it was from there that I was very quickly knew how to take care of that relationship inside yeah. the story. Okay, great. And I, I gotta say, I, I have a lot of light bulb moments in bathrooms at 1 a.m. all the time. Uh, that's fantastic. Yeah, like as I was saying, I, I do really love that element of the film as well. And uh, you know, I think kind of it's important to note that uh, you know the, the you know the the weight in that in that film. I mean, you know, obviously, it's not just you know this this you know really dramatic moment at the start. There's a, a really beautiful love story at the center of it as well. Yeah. Right, Tina, this one's for you. And actually, this one could be for everyone really. So last year was let's just say a challenging year, uh, to say the least. Uh, hopefully this year is going to be better. I wondered what, what was the journey for a film uh, like My Fiona suddenly having to deal with this new reality? Uh, obviously, uh, as we mentioned before, you were going to be premiering at some other festivals. Mm -hmm. how, do, how do you pivot around, you know, how do you get your head around those changes? Actually, has it offered you some better opportunities and some ones that you weren't expecting? Um, I mean, well, we, yeah, I mean, I guess we don't really know because like I said, uh, we were going to be at BFI Flair last year, literally yeah. leaving the Monday after the travel ban was put in place. So we were <laughs> uh, <laughs> jumping on a flight mere days um, before, uh, you know, before everything shut down. Yeah. So um, that changed our trajectory, I guess, pretty significantly. Um, and there was no, you know, th there was nothing set in stone from there. You don't know where to go with stuff. You don't know if going online is the right thing to do because going online wasn't the right thing to do before because that messes yeah. with your distribution, that messes with going on to other, you know, festivals. And so, um, you know, Kelly, and myself and, and the other producers, we, we, we talk through, okay, maybe that's not the right direction to go. And so we held on to our premiere and now we've juggled if that was the right decision, like that felt right at the time, but maybe it wasn't, maybe it was. And we looked into sales and distribution. And the thing is, is that the whole film industry, I mean, the whole festival industry really was all um, up in the air and we're yeah. still online now a year later yeah. so it, nobody really knows what the right thing to do is um, but now we're all navigating it in, in yeah. a, you know in a different capacity um, so yeah I, I I guess we did what we thought was right and here we are now so um, yeah. Kelly I think you can maybe talk a little bit more I mean like we, we've talked through this whole thing I, I mean I'm just here to be her cheerleader, at the end of the day, this is Kelly's baby and it's her film and I'm just here to do whatever feels <laughs> right for Kelly because I want her to feel happy. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna let her speak a little bit more about that, I think. <laughs> yeah, no, I think you, you kind of nailed it. I think really what Tina and I were doing, at least in the beginning, was we were going on every webinar we could find that was yeah. you know, how to pivot during a pandemic and, you know, <laughs> generation, and, and we would be on them and then we'd call each other after and we would just keep kind of going down these what if, okay, well, if we do this and we do this and do this and then, you know, and also um, Jeanette Moss had gotten diagnosed in, with cancer in April last year and that also 
really did change the idea of going out in the festival circuit while she was getting chemo and when she wasn't going to be able to participate even in a virtual way. And that just felt wrong. That didn't feel mm -hmm. so for us too. It was like, we've held off a couple months. Let's just hold off to 2021 and start afresh then. So I, I think, I don't believe in mistakes. I believe everything's a learning process and what happened is exactly what was supposed to happen. Because if we say yeah. it during good things, you got to say it during stuff that's hard too. Yeah. 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 It's been a bit of a learning curve for all of us, I guess. And uh, it provides new opportunities like this, for example, where we can yeah. all where kind I of get... wearing my pajama pants. Exactly. <laughs> 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 Absolutely. It's, kind of, it's kind of a great new normal, though. I mean, because, you know, obviously, maybe there's a world in which there was no pandemic, but we couldn't make it out to Melbourne regardless. Yes. You know, so this is kind of great that we're able to do this. You know, um, this is unrelated but i just watched a a, a play film hybrid that was the first mm -hmm. of sort of you know wow. it's uh, immersive theater that's being filmed so i think that people are finding yeah. uh different avenues to get storytelling across and Absolutely. if we're able to do this virtually and is if that's the option versus not doing it all then absolutely yeah. let's keep telling stories and showing stories and yeah. doing these q a's and and yeah. having festivals online yeah, I've been, yeah. I've been really hardened by the fact that films uh, and artists have found ways to kind of, you know, work through this. And obviously our, you know, our biggest fear when, you know, this all happened last year was like, you know, what films are going to be there? And so I'm, you know, thrilled that, you know, films are still getting made and we're still yeah. seeing those stories and everyone's found a way to work through this, which is really fantastic. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Um, so I'll, I'll, I won't keep you all too long, but uh, I want to end it just very quickly and just kind of ask and if, if what are you all kind of working on now? Like, uh, are, you, are you working on any projects? Are you shooting stuff at the moment? This is for everyone. Who wants to start? <laughs> Who wants to start? <laughs> um, I don't know if this is a show people watch in Australia, but I just was on uh, an episode of 911. It's a... Uh, yeah. It's a Ryan Murphy show here in the wow. States. And you know, um, you know Ryan it, Murphy. It, yeah, you know Ryan Murphy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Um, uh, so I, I did an episode of that during the pandemic and it just aired a few weeks ago. And I'm a writer as well. So I'm writing okay. with my writing partner and we've yeah. got stuff that we're working on. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. I, so right, right when the pandemic hit, um, I just, Spira, maybe you know who she is. Do you know who Edith Ide is, Lisa Ben? Yes, okay. yes. So I just found out about her right before the pandemic. And then literally the day that we had BFI was canceled, brand new page on a Word document. Here we go. And mm -hmm. I started writing. It's called Vice Versa. And it's about the first magazine for lesbians in 1947, Los Angeles. And then um, I brought my aunt, who's also a writer, who's also a consulting producer on my Fiona. She came in as my co-writer. So that's been our little pandemic baby. Um, yeah. Now we're shopping it around. We're meeting with producers and we'll see. Yeah, yeah. She, I, Edith is like, I swear Edith saved my soul of 2020. Yeah. I feel Wonderful. her presence very much. That sounds, that sounds yeah. really exciting. I, I, yeah. I, I hope you get that one up. It'd be great to see. Yeah. I'm like, I'll be coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see it. And how about you, Tina? Um, I mean, I, I have some things, uh, hopefully that I'll be producing for the later in 2021 and, uh, in 2022, they're pre-production development stage right now. Um, they're, yeah. you know, things are just starting to kind of get thrown at me now after this year of just like pushing things to next year. Um, yeah. and, uh, I'm for the first time in my life wrote a, a feature this year. Um, I've never written before, so. <laughs> Ooh, we'll exciting. see. I, I'm I'm gonna... good. <laughs> uh, so we'll see. I'm hoping at some point in my life to direct it uh, after I go through another few, you know, versions of that. Oh, but um, cool. that's for a later time. We'll we'll see how it goes. But yeah, hopefully I'll be producing some stuff uh, again for Kelly at some point in my life because I loved working with her every moment. Uh, and yeah, hopefully we'll get this Look team back together. Women multi hyphenates. <laughs> I love it. All of these right? multi hyphenates. I love it. I love it. I love Amen it. to that. 
Well, thank you all so much for joining me. It was a real pleasure. And I, as I said before, we, we're so excited to be screening the film. It's really wonderful. I can't wait for people to discover the movie. Um, it's screening in cinemas on the 13th and 14th of March at Cinema Nova and Jam Factory here in Melbourne and online as well. So um, I hope everyone gets to see this film and I, I wish you all the best of luck. Um, it's been really wonderful chatting to you all. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank 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 you.